Hello everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel Learn Just Be With Mahesh. Wish you all a very happy new year 2024. So in today's video, we are going to look into some of the best practices with respect to Google Cloud Storage in all the Google Cloud certifications. So let's get started. So first, as a data engineer, what are the best practices which you should consider? So is make sure whenever you create a Google Cloud Storage bucket, the location type is either dual region something like mumbai delhi singapore taiwan kind of a stuff or it could be say for example uh, melbourne and sydney so those kind of stuff is what you should prefer the reason is the data is not leaving that specific country so or it's going to be compliant that's the key part so or go with a very single simple re uh, single region is what i would say something like mumbai singapore so or london that is going to be a good choice when we have a multi region location type the data is going to get replicated there are chances that the data is going to leave the country and it's going to create compliance issues so always prefer to do that and even when you look into bigquery so when you're trying to load data from Google Cloud Storage into BigQuery and you are using Google Cloud Storage as a source, meaning an external BigQuery table, Google ref, uh, prefers you to use dual region or single region. So it's like a must is what I would say as a data engineer, you should always follow. So as a data engineer, lots of data is going to come. The data can be sensitive. So if we want to regularly find out any kind of sensitive information is there, turning on DLP is going to be a very important choice. Moving on to the next one, as a cloud architect, what are the best practices which we should follow? So, when you create a bucket, the bucket should be having a proper name. A proper naming convention should be followed. So, it should never be a project ID. So, what could be the good choice? Using a GUID, globally unique, uh, unique identifier is going to be a very good choice. So, that is a good convention which you can follow. The second thing is whenever you are going to provision a Google Cloud Storage bucket, make sure the bucket is having a purpose and how long the objects in that bucket is going to be staying, when it should be removed or the class should be changed. To do that, you can use object lifecycle management. So you can definitely leverage auto class, but if you have a proper strategy, objects uploaded today, 30 days from down the line, it should be changed into cold line. Maybe 60 days after the object should be, or maybe say for example, one year down the line, the object should be completely deleted. So that kind of a stuff, you can definitely apply it using object lifecycle management, which is going to reduce the storage cost. Moving on to the next one, as a network engineer, right? So what are the best practices? Google Cloud Storage, Bucket and Network Engineer, you may find the connection is very less, but definitely there's a connection. So two important points or two best practices, which I would suggest is turn on private Google Access at each sub-network level. So for example, if you have a virtual machine or it could be a Kubernetes cluster, which needs to access a Google Cloud Storage Bucket using internal IP address. Right. As a best practice, we'll never ever create a virtual machine or a Kubernetes cluster with an in external IP address. Internal IP address is a very good choice. In that case, if the VM needs to access the bucket using internal IP address, private Google access needs to be turned on. That's very important. Along with that, this is usually not done, but by mistake, if it has been done, make sure you restore it back. Meaning you should never ever delete the default internet gateway. So if that is deleted, the VM cannot interact with the bucket using internal IP address, even though private Google access is turned on. So these are two best practices one can follow with respect to Google Cloud Storage as a network engineer. As a security engineer, what are the best practices which you can follow? So again, two important stuffs. So always prefer to go with uniform access. So never ever use fine grain access or in simple terms, access control list because this is a legacy. When you use uniform access, it's completely controlled using cloud IAM, which is always a better choice. So say for example, if you have an object that needs to be exposed, only that object needs to be exposed, the better choice is create a separate bucket. Create a separate bucket and upload that object and grant the access at the bucket level. That is going to be a good choice. So please note, buckets are not charged, but the objects inside the buckets are charged. So, and 
The second best practice is this is a must and should is what I would say. Turn on this org policy where it is going to enforce public access prevention, meaning accidentally also somebody with editor role, owner role, storage admin role cannot make an org bucket public. So this is going to be a very good choice. Now, as a DevOps engineer, what are the best practices which you can follow with respect to Google Cloud Storage? I was able to figure it out only one. As a DevOps engineer, Terraform is something which you are going to definitely focus more. So whenever you have Terraform, there's going to be a cool feature in Terraform called a state, right? Where can you keep the state file in uh, Google Cloud? A Google Cloud Storage bucket is going to be a very good choice. So, and you may keep changing the state of it. So turning on object versioning is going to be a very good choice. So object version, the, the state files are going to be very few size. The size is going to be very small. So, but it is also recommended on top of object versioning, you turn on object lifecycle also. Object lifecycle management, that's going to be a good choice. It's not highly recommended. It's not mandatory, I would say, but if you feel like, go ahead and turn it on. So, but object versioning needs to be turned on. That way, if something goes wrong, you will be in a position to restore back. So I was able to only figure it out one. So where as a DevOps engineer, you may leverage Google Cloud Storage to this extent. So if you find anything more, do let me know in the comment section. Now the final one as a ML engineer. So what are the best practices you may use when you are using Google Cloud Storage bucket? The whole purpose of uh, this bucket is as an ML engineer, I'll use it for keeping my raw data. Right? I may be doing convolutional neural networks. So, or any kind of deep uh, neural networks, or it could be a very simple linear regression. So the raw data, it could be a CSV file, it could be a video file or an image, where I can keep it easily is Google Cloud Storage. Now, at some point of time, when I build a model, and if I want to keep the model for a long term, maybe I have to share it, right? One of the possible options is exporting the model into Google Cloud Storage bucket. So these are two users where, as an ML engineer, you can see it. Now, you would have observed throughout the slides, I was able to have the, the logo of the certification. So why this is not there is... I have not got the certification yet. So we'll have the ML certificate soon. So you should be seeing new videos on ML, ML, ML engineering soon, uh, every day. So with that, once again, wishing you all a very happy new year, 2024. So, and have a rocking year. Thank you.